Thanks to LG for sponsoring this video. Check out their ultra fine 4K monitors featuring their unique ergo stands with the link in the video description. So here's how to create a Spider-Man swinging animation. For starters, if you're not talented enough to make your own Spider-Man model, download one online. And there's plenty of options to choose from. I'm going to use the Spider-Man PS4 model. Next, go ahead and apply a rig for animation to it. Oh, yikes. Uh, cut, cut that. So next, you're going to want to apply a rig for animation to your model. Oh my god, what is going on? Is this Spider-Man at home? Yeah, forget the last 10 seconds. Then you'll want to download a Spider-Man model with the rig already applied to it. Link in the description. Next, we'll need a city environment to swing around in. You can either create your own with the tutorial on the channel, or there's actually a method to capture Google's 3D scans of actual cities, like New York here, for example. And there's also tutorials out there for that, but it's a little bit of a janky method and kind of a gray area if this is legal or not. I missed the part where that's my problem. But of course, we're just all doing this in fun with no commercial use, so you can download the city scan with the link in the description as well. Next up, you can go file, append, and bring that Spidey model into your 3D city. Scale them way down and place them next to a building to make sure you get the scale right. It's me, Spider-Man. Next, you want to plan your swinging route through the city for your Spider-Man model. Then enable automatic keyframing. Starting by grabbing the master bone that has all the other bones parented to it, we're going to rotate and move our Spidey model where we want him for frame one in our animation. Then scrub forward about 30 frames in your timeline, rotate and move your Spidey model again in the direction that you want him to be swinging around a building. We're only focusing on keyframing this one bone for now. Jump forward about another 30 frames, move your Spidey model to the end of his second swing, adding another keyframe between these two for the bottom of his swinging motion. And there we have a blocking swinging motion. Go ahead and block out the rest of your keyframes for the swing. You can add a cool move here by rotating him for a little twisty, spinny, flippy thing. Once you have your blocked out movement complete, split your window and open the graph editor. With the master controller bone selected, you can hide all of the axes for the different transformations, except for the Y axis here. Starting with this one, you want to tweak the graph line to work out momentum and gravity into our animation. Adjusting the lines at the start and end of each swing, just to make it look like gravity is sort of working. You can tweak this on the X and Y axis as well. Next, you might find it difficult to do any more animating on your Spider-Man now that he's moving around so much, so I found adding a spider cam actually helps. So this just go shift A and add in another camera, point it at our Spidey model here, then under constraints, add a new constraint, copy location. For the target, we're gonna grab that Spidey model armature, and then for the bone, we'll grab the master head bone. Choose offset, and then you may have to bring your camera down to reposition it again. But now you can see as we scrub through the timeline, the camera follows Spidey. This makes it easier to add more keyframes now that you can actually see what you're doing. Then you can start posing the arms and legs with the IK controller bones, giving them some cool action poses at each of these main keyframes. Posing them so it kind of looks like gravity is working on his body and limbs. Now, I don't know what's going on with the spine bone now, but we probably should fix that. My back. Oh, my back. Adding some more keyframes to these controller bones throughout the sequence, making it look like momentum is kind of swinging his legs around at the twirl, making this little twirl action move look pretty cool. And keeping momentum in mind with the way his legs would kick and flip in these situations. Now it's time to add some quick camera motion to make all that bad animating look kind of good. So place your cursor at the start of your Spidey animation and go shift A and add in a curve path. Then tap into edit mode and start extruding some points to this path along our route. Make sure to bring it down to Spidey's level in the city and make sure to edit these vertices along the Z axis as well to give us some cool dynamic motion. Motion. Next, you can go shift A and add in a new camera. Here we can have the camera follow along the path now by selecting the first point in the curve and going shift S, cursor to selected. Then grab the camera and go shift S again, selection to cursor. With the camera snapped in place now, you can jump to the curve settings and see where we have path animation. If you adjust the time slider now, you can see the camera moving along that path. Just match the frames with the length of your timeline and then go ahead and add keyframes to this value by hovering over and hitting I to follow it along with the speed that Spider-Man is moving at. Or to make it seem like he's moving fast, have him pass up the camera at some point. Next, you're going to want to jump to your camera view, and with automatic keyframing still enabled, start adding in some rotation keyframes to that camera to get some great fast-moving shots of Spider-Man as he's flying through the city. Next, here's a quick tip on how to add some webs to your Spider-Man. Decide where you want your first web to be, and place the cursor on the building that the web is going to be shot at. Here, go shift A and add in a cube. Then with the cube selected in edit mode, hit M and choose merge at center. So we have just a single vertice. Zoom in on that vertice, extrude it once, and then with the first vertice selected, hit H and choose hook to new object. Tab out of edit mode, and now you can see that the empty controls the position of that vertice. This is pretty awesome. Now let's add some thickness to that vertice by going to the modifiers and adding in a screw modifier. Change the angle to zero and increase the screw just a little bit. Then we can add in a second modifier, this one being a solidify, and give it a little bit of thickness. Now we have some actual geometry for our web. So lastly, with the empty selected, go to your constraints panel and add in a new constraint, copy transform. Here we're going to choose a target of the Spider-Man armature, and the bone will be the left hand in this case. As you can see, doing that, it automatically 
snaps the web right to our Spider-Man model and we'll track it throughout the animation. But it's a little crazy big still, so we'll take the scale down a bit. Then for the material of that webbing is a super simple principled shader, which is a noise texture connected to the alpha value, using a color ramp to increase the blacks and whites a little bit, and a mapping node with a high scale value along the X to reduce some of that stretching. And from a distance, that kind of looks like a web. Then to have Spider-Man let go of the web, you can just animate the influence on the copy transform constraint. And as mentioned at the start of the video, this quick tutorial is brought to you by LG and their ultra fine 4K ergonomic displays. Their unique two hinge ergo stand makes this monitor perfect for every setup. It is super easy to extend, tilt, pivot, swivel, and adjust the height of your monitor. And this makes it great for productivity and content creation for better posture when you're working at your computer for hours on end. Also, did I mention this is a 4K IPS borderless display with HDR10 and comes color calibrated out of the box? To learn more about the LG Ultrafine Ergo displays, check out the link in the video description. For some dope lighting, just use a cool HDR for the environment lighting with a high strength value. And if you're worried that your animation might sort of still suck, you can kind of cover up some of the mistakes with some sweet motion blur. And a few glare nodes in the compositor along with a lens distortion node and a little bit of color grading looks pretty dope. And there's the finished animation, pretty cool looking, maybe a little stiff in places still, but hey, not bad at all for a short amount of work. And yes, I was too lazy to even animate the fingers or the hands, but hey, come at me, bro. <sighs> now go ahead and post your Spider-Man animation all over social media so your friends think you're a boss. What's up?